this week in a midweek game against App State. This is a Blue Devil team that currently leads the country in both home runs and OPS. They've scored over 20 runs in four different games this spring already and 17 in another. Zach Morris is the leadoff batter. As Hartle gets a wave and a miss, one and one. And for those of you familiar with David F. Couch Ballpark, the ball does get out of here in a hurry to a lot of different parts of the park. Hartle contacted, but now he's got two strikes on Zach Morris. 13th start of the season for Morris. Stays alive. And keeps his one and two. Six home runs for Morris this season. Josh Hartle right around two with his ERA. Three and oh through three games started so far. That one curls out of play. The foul ball will keep it again at one and two. A little bit different number for Duke this year. Home runs have not always been the major focus of their offensive attack. But this year, they have jumped out with a long ball in a big way. Wave and a miss. One down. Well, when Hartle's effective, he's using all his pitches, as we said, but he's also getting that breaking ball out of the strike zone and getting guys to chase it as it goes down into the dirt. There you see the mix that he uses. You can't balance it out much more than like much more than that. The curveball, oddly enough, is probably his best pitch. That's his signature pitch, but they save it for important situations. Now here's Ben Miller. He's hit in every game Duke has played so far, and he wastes no time going after the first pitch. Down the right field line, he's going to get extra bases as he slides in with a double. Jumping on the first pitch, that's one thing that, that uh, the Blue Devils like to do. They like to be aggressive in the count. They like to be aggressive very early. And there you see the double down the line. Didn't take him long to keep that string going. Puts a man in scoring position for Alex Stone, who of these nine players for the Blue Devils, Larry, the only guy who was a regular starter for this Duke team a season ago. First pitch hack back into the protective netting. It's 0-1. Well, and I think that we're going to see a lot more of that as the seasons go along, as long as we're trying to figure out the transfer portal and all the things that go along with it. Another foul ball. And now two strikes against Stone. You think about Wake Forest had 10 players drafted last year, so they had to replace all but two starters in their lineup this year. Bounced up the middle, over to second to base, handled by Austin Hawk, and the throw is over to first in time. And a little bit of a momentary panic in the Wake Forest dugout there. You wonder exactly how slippery the ball is going to be. We've talked about the weather, and it has been raining for the past hour plus. No tarp on the field, so the infield is in the same condition as any other part of, of the ballpark. And that ball looked like it might have slipped just a little bit. It had a weird trajectory to it. Yeah, Nick Kurtz had to get up onto his tiptoes to reel that one in. First pitch off the mark to Logan Bravo, who's got a 1-0 count. Bravo, another one of those transfers into this Duke lineup. Comes to them from Harvard. That one squirts away. It's going to allow a run to score. Across comes Miller, and it's 1-0 Duke. Wonder if he might have gotten crossed up on that pitch because he kind of clanked off the glove. Looked like Gill may have been expecting it to do something a little bit different. It just bounced off the glove and then both players went after it, which left home plate open. Clear base paths now. Hartle through the windup sends it into the backstop. The Blue Devils since 2016. Very good record when they score first. And there's a strike called 
So now a three and one. Drilled out to center field, back toward the wall, and it one hops it. Another extra base hit. Bravo's up standing at second. Well, you saw the size on Bravo at 6'5", and uh, it didn't take that baseball very long to get out to the deepest part of this ballpark, 400 straight away. One quick hop off the wall, but there was a zero hang time on that. It was just drilled out to center field. And Seaver King runs very well. He had no chance to get to that ball. A.J. Gracia into the batter's box for Duke. Watches one for a 1-0. and Larry, I don't have to tell you the importance of getting ahead in at-bats as a pitcher, right? That was just the third 3-0 and batter Josh Hartle has faced this season. And obviously, you're trying to fight back from that scenario. Well, especially with the amount of pitches that Josh Hartle has, the more he can make hitters guess, the better off he's going to be with it for it. There's the curveball up high, and I think if you asked him in his early going, that'd be the pitch that's been a little bit troublesome, even though it's his best pitch. Just hasn't quite had the excellent command that he's had the last couple of years with it. There's a two and one offered at, no connection for Gracia. And the count now level. Well, we talked a couple of hitters ago about how he likes to get guys to chase that breaking ball out of the strike zone. That's a good job to lay off of it. Full count pitch. Off the handle, weakly flared into left, down the line, it's off of the wall and fair. A second run crosses for Duke. Gracia will hold up at second. Three hits, all of them doubles for the Blue Devils here in the top of the first. Well, and interestingly, two of the doubles go the opposite way. One down the right field line, one into left field off of uh, left, right hand and left hand hitters. But he takes this one inside, it's still slicing away from when out in left field and hits about halfway up the wall and that's going to the third double of the inning is going to create a quick trip to the mound from Corey Muscara the pitching coach of Wake Forest. Well seemingly coming into this matchup Larry there were a couple of things conflicting heading toward one <laughs> another right I mean it was it was the great pitching from this Wake Forest team, Josh Hartle specifically. And then it was, wow, this is a Duke team that can really hit in a season that entering non-conference play, I think had a lot of question marks around it, the, uh, the offense for Duke, that is. And I think, to be fair, both teams still did not face the ultimate competition early going. So there might have still been some questions, but Duke has really come out swinging it hot and aggressively against Hartle tonight. First pitch taken by Devin Obi, and it drops into the strike zone. This is a guy who's been practically a bench player with some spots starting over the past couple of years for Duke. A lot of raw ability. Even that starting role is nice job by Cameron Gill to dig that one up. The count goes to one and one, but Ebby had a tremendous summer on the Cape and has had a great start to this season, making his 13th start in as many games. <laughs> Two and one contacted into the net. Different kind of breaking ball, a little bit up in the zone. Hartle battling, but he's a saw, he's a junior that has a lot of innings under his belt, so he knows. Okay, I gave up two in the first. If I give up two through six, I've had a good night. With two strikes, Obi just 
barely gets a piece of it. He'll stay alive. You know, the last couple of years with Obi, there's always been this hope with Duke that he would get in the lineup. Swing and miss was sort of the bugaboo. Can't connect there, or does he? Just barely, and tips it back. That may have caught, caught Cameron Gill in an unfortunate spot. Another two and two. And another one fouled away by Devin Obi. So even though Duke had put a, even though they put a couple of runs across the board, the pitch count still wasn't that bad until this hitter. And now all these foul balls are running it up there. Obi takes. The count is full. Yeah, this will be pitch number nine to Devin Obi alone. Four seventy six average on the season so far for Obi. Five home runs. And that's low and inside ball four. So that good multi uh, double digit at bat is like money in the bank for later. One of the reasons that Tom Walter likes Josh Hartle in the Friday night spot is because he believes that he can get six plus innings out of him every Friday night in conference play, which is huge to save your bullpen. He's going to have to have a couple of really low pitch innings to do that. First pitch swing half hearted, albeit out of Macon Winslow, the freshman. Into the air to right. Jake Reinish is there and ends the top of the first inning, but the Blue Devils plate a couple to see in the 17 innings. But uh, power guy, 94 to 96, with a riding fastball that's outstanding at the top part of the zone. And then he's got a really, really hard slider, very good breaking pitch. The book says change up two. He's thrown one all year, so you don't sit on that too much. But uh, it'll be power stuff coming at Wake Forest this evening. The lineup he faces of Wake Forest boasts the preseason ACC player of the year, Nick Kurtz, who is doing fine, I think. We talked to head coach Tom Walter earlier this week, and he's not necessarily worried, but it's certainly not the firepower that you can get out of certain stretches out of your first baseman. Well, part of it has been that he's been pitched around all year long. He's got 14 walks, and uh, they've just been avoiding him as much as they possibly can. One and one to Merrick Houston. Second season in this lineup for Wake Forest. Check that. Kurt says 16 walks. As soon as it popped out, I said, that's not right. <laughs> you ever do that? <laughs> Occasionally, yeah. But it's out first. <laughs> Houston unable to hold back the check of the swing over to Linus Baker, the umpire at first. And now two and two. I think I believe what you just asked me was, do I ever say anything wrong? <laughs> of course. Houston battles. He'll keep his two and two. What a good shot off the face mask of Alex Stone. toward the back foot. Ball three to Houston. The count now full. Launched out to deep center field. Back toward the wall. And there is another extra base hit this time for the leadoff batter for Wake Forest. Double by Merrick Houston to get things started at the bottom of the first. Well, like we said, pitchers duel, right? Strikeouts galore, <laughs> right? This game's so silly. <laughs> oh, 
Well, that's a great start for Wake Forest because, as we alluded to, Santucci has been lights out so far this season. Coming off of a career high 14 strikeouts in those six innings against Akron. You know, in those six frames, Larry, it only took him 82 pitches to get that far through the game. It was a very efficient yeah. outing for Santucci his last time out. That's getting to three strikes in a hurry. Cut and a miss by Adam Tellier, one and one to count. So he gives up a double on a 3-2 fastball and then goes slider slider to the next right-handed hitter. Opposite field, Tellier lines it out there for Gracia, who makes the catch, the throw into third, offline, and Houston is 90 feet away from scoring with one away. Hit the ball sharply, but concentrated on sending it the other way to try to advance Houston to third. Although it wasn't on the ground and through a hole, it did the job effectively to move him 90 feet away from home plate. And now here's Nick Kurtz. Of the many prospects in this game, the one who is believed to be the highest touted. You saw number three on that list of 2024 MLB draft prospects as we came on the air. Laced down the line, but foul. Yeah, and what that basically means is that he's got the biggest bullseye. Yeah. You know, so he's the guy <laughs> that when you start planning, who's the guy not going to beat us in the lineup? Okay, Kurtz. Well, how are we going to get about around it? We're just going to walk him as many times as we possibly can. Seaver King's been doing a pretty good job behind him, though. Santucci off the mark with the slider, two and one. Seaver King in the on deck circle has fit in pretty well, I'd say, here at the yeah. Division One level. Transfer from Division Two, Wingate, where he hit over 400. Kurtz fouls it back, two and two. You see, now you're halfway between nothing because you got to respect the 96 mile an hour fastball up, but you know that he's got this killer slider as well that he loves to throw to left handers. Fastball rings him up. Kurtz couldn't commit, and that's two down. Tom Walter told us the other day that when Kurtz is hitting well, He's looking fastball and hitting fastball and reacting to breaking stuff. Looked like he was sitting on a breaking ball right there. Now Santucci, an out away from stranding that runner at third. Seaver King's first offering. Brushes him off the plate a little bit, 1-0. and oh. Came around on the breaking ball. We'll get Linus Baker over there's opinion on it just in case. Not much doubt about it. Yours was right. One and one again King unable to hit the breaking ball. And there you see a page out of Hartle's book. Get that breaking ball looking like it's going to be in the lower part of the zone but take it out to the dirt. One and two pulled foul. So the count will stay. When you think about the way that Duke scored their first run on the wild pitch or pass ball, whichever I didn't notice how which way they called it, but pass ball. Wake Forest looking for any way they can. That one's lined and down in left center. It'll roll all the way to the wall. Extra base hit drives in a run for Seaver King. And that's one back for the Demon Deacons. And when you watch this swing, he's got no business swinging at this pitch. It's up over his eyeballs. But he goes up and he gets on top of it and rips it into left center field. That ball got to the wall in a hurry. This pitch is up. And he just goes out and Tommy Hawks it. Now Tom Walter comes out of the dugout. He's going to have a conversation with Greg Street. 
Not sure what that might be about. Celebration at second base, maybe. Hutt don't want to speculate too much. It just seemed like odd timing. Santucci's first pitch is down in center. Jake Reinish ties it at two for Wake Forest. Go figure. <laughs> the game makes no sense. You know, you expect a pitcher's duel between these two great left-handers. They're seriously, and that's just a nice swing by Reinish back up the middle. Easy score for Seaver King, who has good speed. Out of the zone to Jack Winnay, who's got a 1-0. And whether it's the triple digit scouts that are here or the big crowd or the tenseness of the game, both pitchers struggling a little. Now 2-0 to an A, who's maybe the surprise in this Wake Forest to line up six home runs. Line drive in the left. There's another hit. And they're at first and second with two away for Wake Forest. First single of the night. Right? Kind of an unusual. And now we're going to have a visit at the mound from the Duke pitching coach. And the crowd starts to get into it just a little bit more. Well, this is certainly not the way that anybody anticipated this game. No, but I will say. This is awesome, right? I mean, <laughs> this this has this has ACC tournament yeah. championship on the line feel to it. The environment, the crowd that is on hand waiting through the, the hour rain delay and still packing this place out. And it's the first game of the year in conference play. And it's the first inning. We're not we're not even <laughs> through one, Larry. Brady Kirkpatrick, the pitching coach for Duke, back to the dugout. Jonathan Santucci had not given up a run prior to this start. Two have crossed in the first <laughs> inning. Big cut from Austin Hawk, who has an 0-1. And, and leads the Wake Forest team in RBIs. 17 of them. Hawk watches. He's got two strikes. Didn't like the call. It didn't seem. Inside corner, down around the knees. He thought it was slightly off the plate. Now two and two to Austin Hawk, younger brother, obviously, of former Wake Forest star Tommy Hawk. From nearby Reagan High School, just about 12 or 13 minutes up the road. Bows it away, two and two stays from Pofftown, North Carolina, in go. case you saw the graphic and weren't sure how to pronounce that. Now a full count. Wake Forest. With its seventh batter at the plate, that's exactly as many as the Blue Devils had in the top of the first. Swing and miss. Santucci gets out of the side. Just like we all thought it would go. 2-2 <laughs> two, two through one. Drew Yu settles in for the Duke Blue Devils. Josh Hartle 
Packages a strike on the first pitch. Eight, nine, one batters due up for Duke here. Andrew Yu, Wallace Clark, their shortstop in the nine hole. And then back to the top of the order. You in a quick hole here, 0 and 2. Second start of the season for Andrew Yu, batting 545. A close take. And now he's got one ball and two strikes. Backdoor breaking ball, good pitch. There's one skied up into the air, shallow center field. And a leaping grab out there by Seaver King. Maybe to prevent overrunning it. He was coming in hard and then got some elevation, just got a little bit closer to it. You see the yellow hair and the short haircut for Seaver King. The other day, Jake Reinish and Chase Burns got their hair cut very close. Reinish got a home run that day, and as he came in, the entire team went crazy as he came to the dugout. And rubbing his hair and everything else, and the next day, 29 of the 40 players on the Wake Forest team had short hair or yellow colored hair. In most cases, both from what I saw when the team was huddled up yeah. prior to the start of this one. One on one count to Wallace Clark. Three balls and one strike with Zach Morris waiting on deck. That's a really good take. When hitters do, it gets out of the strike zone. Looks that, at a strike there. Kind of the same pitch that Hawk was wondering about. Hardle with a full count here. Called strike three. Every batter has felt like a test for Josh Hartle so far. He passed that one. Very, very, very bottom of the strike zone for Josh Hartle. And it's called strike three, though. And if that's the way the zone's going to be, and we've seen it both sides already, make your adjustment, fellas. Second strikeout for Hartle. Second plate appearance for Zach Morris, who watches to a 1 and 0 count. He struck out on. Five pitches his first time up. And a three and oh. Turns his back towards home plate. Pitcher just regroup a little bit. What do I need to do to get back on track here? Finds the strike zone. It's three and one. It's an awful lot of wisdom stored right on the back side of that mound. You see pitchers get back there and figure it out yeah. a lot of times. <laughs> Finds it again there. Full count. Hardle was take the hat off, wipe the forehead in that area. Just go through your mental keys. Full count bounced through the right side, and Zach Morris gets a single with two away. Well, I mentioned earlier when Hartle had a 3 0 count to Logan Bravo in the first inning, that resulted in a double. It's the second 3 0 he's gotten to with the batteries. Not walked either. But hits for both of them. Well, Hartle's not going to overpower you like Santucci will, but he will confuse you to death with the amount of pitches that he throws, and usually for strikes. Having some trouble landing his breaking ball tonight. Here's a strike to Ben Miller. He just stays hot. First move we've seen out of Hartle. Although most of the base runners have started at second. <laughs> 
But neither team is going to startle you with their base stealing exploits. You're not going to see a running game constantly in motion. Numbers about the same. That being said, Zach Morris four for four in stolen base attempts this season. Sales high on Miller, one and one. Fifteen for eighteen for Duke, fifteen for seventeen for Wake Forest. Especially in a ballpark like this, you don't want to run yourself out of anything. No doubt. And I mean, if you're the Blue Devils, you just you're coming off of a 28 run yeah. performance, right? <laughs> like, why? Why would you? Why would you send runners? You're going to keep hitting that way. High bounce up the middle. No play. And they're at first and second with two away. So a double and an infield single for Ben Miller. As Austin Hawk. Made, I believe, the right choice there. Ate it. Yeah, there wasn't going to be any play at first base. The only chance was going to be Houston coming in from shortstop, and he was a little bit on the deeper side, so he couldn't get to it as quickly. Alex Stone now the batter. Grounder to second his first time up is 0 for 1. Gets away from Gill, but he tracks it down better this time. You mentioned those 28 runs. I saw Chris Pollard at practice last night. He says, your guys arm weary. You going to have anything left for this weekend series? <laughs> That's a lot of runs in one game. Stone lofts it up into the air, way up in right. Reinish hunts it down and makes the grab, and it retires the side. So we go to the bottom of the second, still tied up at two runs apiece. Beginning with Tate Ballestero. Swings through it. One and one count to the designated hitter for Wake Forest today. Cameron Gill, the catcher, is in the on deck circle. Then back up top of the order. Laced over to third. Nice backhanded snag by Ben Miller for the first out. Firmly hit. Nice handlebar mustache. Gotta love that. Really like that. I got traded for Raleigh Fingers one time, so. <laughs> Love that. Well, I was going to say, I does that classify as a handlebar as uh, much as a, with the with the twirl you use, use the heavy pomade? I don't. I think the handlebar comes down the sides of the face too, right? Occasionally up into mutton chops. Either way, it's a good look. I still shave once a week, so you know I don't pay much attention. <laughs> Mustaches can't grow one. <laughs> Couple of big swings out of Cameron Gill. Really solid defensive catcher added to this Wake Forest team in the offseason. He can't connect, strikes out, and there's two away. We talked about the shuffling of the lineup. Tom Walter, a fantastic job reloading from that historic team a season ago. And has built this thing up in relatively quick fashion. They've become, you know, a brand name in college baseball. They've had good talent in the past, but it's all been more on the offensive side. But when they came up with the idea for the pitching lab about six or seven years ago, it really tilted the windmill. And now it's become a destination spot for players that understand they can take their game on the mound to a different level because of what they're able to learn around this program. 
Sam Tucci in on the feet of Merrick Houston. A two and one count to the leadoff batter for Wake Forest. One for one with a double. A very straight shooting staff. One of the pit, one of the staffs that you ask a question, you better be ready for the answer yeah. because they'll tell you the answer. <laughs> and, it, and it might be no, you know, Adam tell you we're not going to guarantee you the shortstop spot. We'll give you a chance to compete for it, but you're probably going to end up at third. And you know there are no guarantees for spots. Chase Burns kind of sorted out, kind of uh, came after the Wake Forest team on his own. So it, it's become a destination spot for transfer students. Full count. Houston puts it in play. Diving effort, unsuccessful by Miller, but snagged it short. And Wallace Clark makes the throw over. A great stretch by Bravo at first as well, and it retires the His third frame of work for Wake Forest. We'll face four, five, six in the Duke order, beginning with Logan Bravo, who's one for one, a double and a run scored in the first. Takes on the first pitch, and a one and no count. Josh Hartle and Chase Burns live together. You think there's going to be some fun in that room on draft day? Oh, they'll have a blast. <laughs> Now two and zero. Oh. Bravo has been an on-base machine for Duke this season. Torqued his body, left the bat head behind, and now it's two and one. Waved. To even the count at two balls and two strikes. Chase Burns will get the start for Wake Forest in the game two of the series. Bravo goes the other way, high up into the air, chasing it into the gap is Jake Reinish, and it drops at the warning track. Bravo easily in at third base. He reaches for the second time in as many plate appearances. Got around the bases pretty good. That ball was really hard to see out there in kind of a dark spot in the corner where the field juts out just a little bit. Ty Blankmeyer, the former Wake Forest coach, having a quick conversation at third base. Gracia spits one up the middle and it drives in a run. Duke back out in front three to two. Got in on the hands a little bit, but just not quite enough, and then waved at it as it went by him up the middle. Good effort by Houston. Had short, but he couldn't come up with it. So Bravo and A.J. Gracia, two for two today. Logan Bravo comes across to score his second run of the three the Blue Devils have put up. Man on first for Devin Obi, that nine pitch walk his first time up. Swings and misses at the breaking ball. There's another, and again, Obi can't connect. Leaves it low. It's the third triple of the year for Duke, and Bravo wouldn't have been the guy I suspected. No. <laughs> when you look at him at home plate. A swing and a miss by Obi. All three strikes on breaking balls. One away now. As we get a look at Chris Pollard. Man, he's done a sensational job with the Duke program. He's really turned it into a power. It's one of those that, Larry, it feels like it's in that, that second tier of programs where the next step is, is breakthrough and get to Omaha. Yeah, I would agree with that, but it's, it's a program that's well-respected inside the ACC, 
in the coaches when they vote on teams that could win the championship that year and he's won every place that he's been. Hardo working from the stretch just to check in on AJ Gracia at first. Winslow fouls it, got himself in the foot. There was some talk after the Super Regional last year that Pollard might be one of the desired coaches on the circuit as jobs opened up. And the Duke community stepped up to make sure that he stuck around. One offered at Winslow misses. There's the one two. Onto the ground and through the left side. Another base knock for the Blue Devils. Gracia stays put at second. And there are two on with one away. Well, the breaking ball stayed up around knee high, and when it does that, it was a long reach, but he got to it and just managed to hook it into the hole. Eight base hits already for Duke. Wouldn't have suspected that in the third inning. High chopper. And called a foul ball by Greg Street behind home plate. So Andrew, you with an 0 and 1 count. You mentioned the hits. Five of the last seven to dig in for the Blue Devils have hit safely. <laughs> 0 and 2 to you. Again at the very bottom of the strike zone. <laughs> Hartle got him swinging. Third punch out, excuse me, fourth for Josh Hartle. And the difference in location between that breaking ball and the breaking ball that went for a base hit before it is about eight inches or so in height. Wallace Clark went down looking on a full count his first time up. Fouls off the first pitch. Clark Hill will round out two times through the order for Josh Hartle. On the ground, and it's through. Clark looks to drive in a run. Around comes Gracia, and he dives in safely. The Duke very aggressive with the bats and finding holes. Looked like that ball had a chance to be caught with the dive by Tellier. He just came up a foot or so short and no chance for Winay in the field to throw anybody out. Quickly back up two for Duke. Breaking ball finds the strike zone. Oh, and one to Zach Morris. His third time up to the plate already. Sends it foul. Oh, and two. But Duke isn't shy about swinging the bat, are they? No, not at all. We thought they would come out very aggressively, and they certainly have. <laughs> no 
Morris just nicks it. He'll hang in there with an 0-2. I mentioned this is the start of the third time through the order for Josh Hartle. That's normally the sign at which you start to kind of pay attention to starting pitchers. Yep. He, he kind of has a different standard, though, it feels like, but on a night like tonight where he's been knocked around a little bit, that might matter. Throw over to second. Hawk did a great job just to glove that and keep it in the infield. A little body roll to make sure the runner stayed in place. If we look through some of the numbers earlier in the day, the aggressiveness of the Duke team, as opposed to the Wake team that walks more, was significant. That one gets away from Gill into the backstop. Both runners advance. There are two in scoring position as the count moves to one and two. I'm not exactly sure what happened to that ball coming out of Josh Hartle's hand, but you very rarely see a pitch get away with him up in the strike zone. If he does have a wild pitch or if he does lose control, it's almost always in the dirt around home plate. And that one just took off. One and two weekly over to second gloved. On a short hop, the throw to first is in time. So Austin Hawk retires the side, but the Blue Devils tally two more, and they lead it four to two going to the bottom of the third. And Hawk thought that he caught it. Morris thought that he caught it, but Joshua Ryan Clark said it was no catch. And Hawk hesitated, fortunately for Wake Forest. Morris wasn't running, and they were still able to get the out at first base, or it could have been another run or more for Duke. Adam Tellier came around 0 and 1 the count as he begins against Jonathan Santucci fouls it away two strikes quickly. Well, Wake Forest able to answer the challenge immediately in the first inning after Duke after Duke jumped out by two. See how they come back this time around. Santucci bounces it. Tellier says it nicked him after the bounce, tossed his bat aside. Greg Street says no. Oh, that's a quality sell job by Tellier right there. Well, it looks so good that there's going to be some deliberation, and the umpiring crew is perhaps going to take a second look at this. And there, of course, is the universal earmuffs motion, which means they are going to review it. Well, we got to slow it down about 15 or 18 miles per hour before we'll able be able to tell anything about that. If it didn't hit him, that's a just great reaction from Tellier. If it did hit him, it should be easy. But there was no doubt in his mind. He reacted. Yeah, there was, there was conviction there. Good word, conviction. Tell you a guy you and I saw here last year, but in a different uniform. Transfer from Ball State. Played pretty well in that multi-team mm -hmm. event. And he's really been a spark plug for this Wake Forest squad. He's been solid. Tom Walter played with the idea of having Tellier lead off and Merrick Houston batting second, but has elected to flip-flop them and they've produced in both spots. Well, the ball skipped right, but it's really hard to tell if it nicked him on the way by. Well, and coming out of the left-handed Santucci, that's the, that's the direction it theoretically was spinning anyway, right? The funny thing about the breaking ball, though, is when you spin it, it actually backs up when it hits the dirt. So if, if it's if it's from the left hand side and you would think it would bounce off that way, the ball actually usually backs up. That one took off. I'm not sure we've got a good enough view from any of the replays that we have seen to definitively overrule the call. And chances are if we don't, I'm not sure the umpires are going to because I'm basically flipping coins on this one right now. Yeah. 
It is taking a couple extra ticks from what I thought it would. Here's Greg Street. And the call is going to stand. They're going to make Tellier continue the plate appearance. So now a one and two. He shakes his head a little bit more like he doesn't agree with the call. Being the honest young lad that he is. Santucci's one and two runs in on the feet of Tellier two and two. They all are right. Now a full count. Tellier is going to advance to first either way. And a little bit of attitude there. Greg Street tells him to make a beeline for first. And that gets the crowd into the game, gets Tom Walter out of the dugout to say, don't be talking to my players. Or to try to just make amends with home plate umpire Greg Street. So tell your takes ball four, and you saw that that turn. Well, couldn't really tell if he said anything, but definitely got the crowd back in the game a little bit, especially after that one sails high on Nick Kurtz. Runner on first, no outs. Santucci. Can't find the strike zone, two and nothing. A hitter's count to a certified hitter in Kurtz. <laughs> Top shelf, three and nothing. 2-0 goes with a breaking ball and really missed badly with it. Walk on four pitches, another Nick Kurtz walk. And like you said earlier, Larry, if you're not lighting it up with your bat, you might as well take the pitches when they're outside of the zone and get on base a bunch. Well, and you see that that's what Nick Kurtz has been willing to do. 27% on the walk rate this year compared to 21 the last couple of years. And it's really hard, Darren, to be that patient because you know that Number one, it's your future on the line. Number two, you want to do damage for your team. And, and he's one of the team captains, and, and he takes it very, very seriously. And so you know that he wants to produce, and his job is to drive in runs. And so it's hard to just sit back and watch that mantle of responsibility transfer to Seaver King hitting behind him. It's been pretty successful to this point in time, but it's a hard thing for a young player to do. Man, Kurtz just put his helmet back on after... Letting his ears breathe for a second. Weird to see him with that buzz cut, too. <laughs> Here's Seaver King. RBI double in the first. First pitch swung on. Deep left field. Goodbye. A three-run home run for Seaver King. It puts the Demon Deacons back out in front. And King decided to meet the aggression of the Duke batters with a first pitch hack. Bam. That was a loud one. And yeah, I was talking with an agent before the game. We got all kinds of people here tonight 
and said he's been doing the job, but it's been kind of quietly. The numbers are pretty decent, but not great. That was very loud. It was a loud home run. It was loud coming off the bat. And that's ripped right back up the middle. Jake Reinish with his second knock of the day. Darren, at the top of the inning, we talked about how would Wake Forest respond after they came back in the first inning from a 2-0 deficit. They responded very well so far. Action in the Duke bullpen. As Jonathan Santucci, who had not surrendered a run all season, has given up five here in the bottom of the third. Foul ball. And Jack Winnay with an 0-1. Well, it's one of the axioms of baseball, in my mind, anyway. You're due. Yeah. Baseball's played in threes. <laughs> well, it wasn't going to last all season, no, right? But baseball's a game that's played in threes a lot. And that ball hit Winnay in the foot, and he's going to take a quick walk down to see Billy Salento and try to get some feeling back. But the averages even out at some point in time. And... and we talk about Nick Kurtz not having a lot of home runs yet. Well, by the end of the season, he's going to get to his average, and he's going to get to the numbers that everybody expects him to put up, which means somebody's paying for it later on. And the same thing with pitchers. You know, you're getting a good hot streak. Well, at some point in time, it's got to even out because that's what baseball does. So when A has shaken it off. The last game that Jack when A played here, he went straight away center field over the 400 foot mark over the batting eye, which is significant power in this ballpark. Santucci well off with the breaking ball, one and one. You know, we showed uh, we showed Josh Harder with a fastball that got away from him earlier, up and wide, and now Santucci does the same thing. I don't know if the balls are slick or. Up and away, two balls and one strike to Jack Winnet. Right now for Santucci, the right shoulder is flying open, and he's coming off the ball pretty significantly when you leave two pitches in a row like that. That's an adjustment that needs to be made. Skyward. Shallow right center. Zach Morris squeezes. And that's out number one. Five batters in. Then that was all he did was he closed up his side a little bit, the front shoulder. Got a little bit better balance and rhythm. Then made a quality pitch. It's a lot easier doing it up here in the broadcast booth than down there in the field in the heat of battle. You just make it sound easy. <laughs> Swing and a miss for Austin Hawk. It is easy if you don't have to do it. There's the strike zone. Quick 0 and 2 to Hawk. Went down swinging his first time up, though he fought for a little bit. That was on six pitches. I'm never going to say the way that I think the game's going to go again. Before the game we, starts. Come on, Larry. <laughs> we we knew better. Man. We knew better. I told everybody. Yeah, two to one. Final score. Gems from both guys. There's a called strike three for Santucci. Two down now. And Austin Hawk, who wasn't thrilled with the strike zone his first time up. A little something to say, at least between his ears, about that one. 
back door outside corner bottom of the strike zone. Tate Ballestero takes 1 and 0 the count. He lined out to third base his first time up is 0 for 1. Haven't quite seen the velocity tonight from Santucci. I thought we might see. I remember watching him pitch last year. He was just so impressive, but he was mid 90s. With the killer slider. I will say, since about the time that the teams arrived today, the temperature has dropped pretty significantly with the rain, Fair. about about 15 degrees or so. And that extra hour delay when you give yeah. yourself for six o'clock to start. That's no fun. That's ball four. Four pitch walk there at first and second. Get the feeling this might be a little bit of a pivotal point in the ball game and as we look to the right side is that Kirkpatrick coming out. Yeah, Brady Kirkpatrick, second year pitching coach to the mound for the Blue Devils. Approach with a couple of outs on the board, a couple of base runners. It was the first pitch to Cameron Gill. This is low and outside, 1 0. Oh. Short arm delivery got a big breaking ball almost a sweeper fastball will get up to 91 to 92 or three. Evens it up one and one. Unusual arm action back behind his head very short arm. One and one to Cameron Gill. Lays it out of play to the right side. Now one and two. Six three two twenty five. Aren't they all? <laughs> <laughs> People want to talk about how the game's changed in the last twenty years. There's one way. Size. Pros is one and two. Got a swing and a miss, and it gets the Blue Devils. 3-4 in the Duke order, beginning with Ben Miller. Drops one into the strike zone for a quick 0-1. Miller, two for two, an infield single his last time up. Flair drops in left field. And that is three for three on the night for Miller. Yeah, I looked at the numbers and I said, well, he can't hit 500 all year. Right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> What's he up to now? <laughs> well, he's got a hit. And this, ha this happened in the first when he doubled. He's got a hit in all 13 games the Blue Devils have played so far. Usually multiple hits. Alex Stone yanks it foul. 27 hits for the season already. Stone one of just three in the Duke lineup without a hit tonight. Even though we're just now into the fourth inning. Nice to have friends, you know, 
phone blowing up with friends from all over the country saying nice call on the pitchers duel. <laughs> <laughs> Miami chimes in. Thank you. Just to just to keep us humble, you know. Bouncer over to short. There's the toss for Hawk at second, and the Deacons get two. <laughs> Got to believe they're going to look at this one. Ball took a really high hop on Merrick Houston. He had to go up over his head to catch the ball first, then went underhand with the throw. And that slowed things down just a little bit. Good turn by Hawk. There's the big hop. And that's what threw the timing off a little bit. Big stretch by Kurtz, so that's a big man down there at first base. That's every bit of 6'6 six, six stretching out there. So funny you mentioned people blowing up our phones to correct us on things. Linus Baker is the home plate umpire, not Greg Street, <laughs> who was scratched right before we started. So Baker and his crew having a second look at this one. Okay. And you see Merrick Houston demonstrating to his teammates how he had to reach up for that ball. Look at the stretch by Kurtz. What do you think here? Enough to overrule? I don't think it's enough to overrule. Maybe this angle. Now nah, I think he got in there. Looking at it from that side, I think he got in safe. Looked like the weight had started to go forward on the base when the ball was getting to the glove. The more you slow these down, the harder they are to see. You watch the body language of the players. A lot of times they'll be shaking their head one way or another to their teammates. Nick Kurtz doesn't seem to be going out of his way to feel very confident or unconfident about it. Over time, there's an adaptation, though, right? Players, they just they play it straight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. these guys are accustomed to, to these these plays being dissected in slow motion all the time. You don't really want to give away your hand. No, and this is a really long one now. You know, like the veteran Adam Tellier selling the hit by a pitch that was yeah. <laughs> ruled not to be. <laughs> but You're right, though. This close one. Yeah, and this one has taken a while. A long one, yeah. So here comes Linus Baker. Oh, and the call's confirmed. There you go. Or rather, it stands, I should say. So they're going to keep the double play in here. My official score giving me all kinds of grief because she was right on it. <laughs> <laughs> so clear base paths for Logan Bravo with two away. Man, he's big. Pulls it foul one and one. I mean, look, he's from Harvard. Ben Miller, the grad transfer from Penn. I mean, Duke is doing a great job yeah. as a program single-handedly dispelling some of the preconceived notions about baseball in the Ivy League. These dudes can play. But... And their students. These two schools here match up pretty evenly. No slouch in the classroom department. Bravo sends it foul down the line. Even count now 2 2. Ryan Massey will be, Michael Massey rather, who will be pitching on Sunday. Just inducted into the Omicron Delta Kappa National Leadership Society, Honor Society. 
with a 381 grade point. It's right around where yours was, right? <laughs> give or take. <laughs> <laughs> More give than take. A great take by Logan Bravo. The full count bounces across, and that's ball four. You know, the pitch count getting up there, and yes, it's their fourth appearance of the year, but they're still not where they're going to be a month and a half from now, arm strength wise. So, you already see Santucci in the dugout. You would think it's not long before Hartle's in there, too. AJ Gracia, two for two. There is action in the Wake Forest bullpen. Ben Schnoski is up for the Demon Deacons. Hartle 0 and 2. That one's lifted deep into the gap in right center field. Reinisch gets to the wall and runs out of room. AJ Gracia muscles one out. And it brings two across for the Blue Devils. Muscles is the perfect descriptor for what he did to that ball. It was something that hung inside, and he shortened up the swing and yanked it into the gap. Just pulls the arms in a little bit and lofts a long, high fly ball that just keeps on going. And Reinish runs out of room, and Tom Walter out of the dugout. Following the A.J. Gracia two-run homer, Duke back out ahead by one run. Devin Obi will be the first to face him and swings at the first pitch. Got four pitches for Shinovsky, and he's been a, a, a good reliever coming out of the bullpen a little bit longer situations. Throws those four pitches, and this is his fifth appearance of the year with seven and a third innings. Ten strikeouts and only two walks. When his changeup's over, he can be effective. Hard hit ground ball snagged by Houston. It's short, and the throw gets by Kurtz. Obi barrels over top of the Wake Forest first baseman. And they're going to give him second base. A really odd play as Kurtz tried to get some position to play the hop. It was a great backhand stab by Houston, and the throw was a little bit in between, and they're going to give him second. For after he runs into Kurtz at first base, who was trying to field the ball. Yeah, now before Tom Walter can get out to argue about it, he's sent back to the dugout as the umpires are going to gather and have a conversation amongst themselves. Well, what you just saw there, very incidental, right? I mean, Kurtz was simply trying to play the hop, so he stepped back yeah. and incidentally in the, the right. pathway for Obi. As he was trying to field the ball. Linus Baker explaining the judgment to Tom Walter. And now a runner in scoring position for the Blue Devils. And unhappily, Tom Walter heads back to the dugout. And he did not seem as reasonable as their prior conversations tonight. <laughs> it was a nice play by Houston to get to the ball. And the throw was just kind of in between the short hop and that Davy Concepcion throw that bounces far enough out that you can play it easily on the big hop. Now the Wake Forest fans not loving Duke hitting coach Eric Tyler consulting with his guy making Winslow at the plate. So the play is going to be scored an error on the shortstop and interference at first base. 
Winslow first pitch up into the air shallow center Hawk there from second and it retires the side couple across for the Blue Devils they reach I got here a little bit before three o'clock today and the scouts were filling up the stands already I mean there were about 25 guys that beat me in here into the ballpark at that time and it just kept filling out every team represented here tonight multiple people here from a large number of organizations as they do their cross checking <laughs> not a lot to hang your head on Owen Proch throwing to the top of the Wake Forest order one and one to Merrick Houston yeah word from administration here at one point was up to 150 scouts most if not all major league teams had multiple representatives some up to four foul ball from Houston makes it one and two ran into a gentleman scouting for my home team that played with my son in the minor leagues don't you love that the small the small world baseball is another foul ball for Houston I believe I said one and two a moment ago it's two and two full count Merrick Houston this is his third time up he's had a full count all three times huh. grounds it down the third baseline Miller the backhanded snag the throw on a hop and it's in time Merrick Houston tried to go with the flaps out again for the safe call, but no argument from Matt Wessinger, the Wake Forest first base coach. Nice play going to his backhand side right down the line, picking it up quickly, and let's get rid of it quickly. And there's the throw that's a little bit further out that lets you pick it cleanly and make that play. The bare knuckle boxer. In the hot corner makes the play Ben Miller for Duke and there's a sliding grab by Bravo smart plays from the two Ivy League grad transfers at the corners those two hot corners how come third base is hotter than first you know I don't know that's just what we call it right <laughs> you play in maybe more at third than you do at first but those are two nice plays and both of these clubs have been pretty solid defensively this year as well so the makings of two championship teams we're seeing here on the first night of ACC play. And it's been a good ball game. Not what we expected, but a very good baseball game. Yeah, I think we knew that much, right? It had to be it had that. to be a good game. Strike one in to Nick Kurtz. Now we see the shift, and we see Miller go over behind second base as the middle infielder for the big shift on, Kurt, on Kurtz. One and one, yeah. Center of your screen over where the second baseman would normally play, just on the edge of the grass. That's the third baseman, Ben Miller, as Kurtz pulls one foul. It's a long way to go, just to stand out there by second. Wallace Clark all by his lonesome on that opposite side. Theory being only move one player instead of two. Action clock down to five. Proch finally gets it off. Kurtz pokes it up the middle, and Proch makes the play himself. That retires the side in order at the top of. Not something that Duke is known for traditionally. Andrew Yu looks at a strike. He's 0 for 2. Fly ball and a strikeout. But Duke has hit a lot of balls hard tonight. Yu a frantic swing to go down 0 2.
Things in there. Against Ben Shinoski. Another one and two to Andrew Yu. Didn't get much of it, did he? Don't have to, do you? <laughs> no, not, not for that. Old foul, Yu with another one. Will retain his count. This will be pitch number seven. Andrew Yu would. Great defensive catcher. He's not really been able to firmly put himself in the lineup as a platoon guy back there for Duke the past couple of years and watches strike three from Shinoski. Uh, thinking dead off speed, looking for the breaking ball or the changeup. And it was a fastball down the middle. You entered tonight 545 average on the season. He's 0 for 3, couple of punch outs now. Wallace Clark takes, and it's a 1-0. It's a change up with a little action at the end. Love action, movement. Don't we all? <laughs> Clark with a 2-0. He's batting left-handed for the first time tonight, switch hitter. Caught by Kurtz at first. And that's two away. A little bit off the end of the bat and got Kurtz to jump maybe just a little bit early. But he's a very good athlete. I wouldn't call it Michael Jordan hang time, but uh, still came up with it. Kurtz, by all the all accounts, by the way, a great basketball player when he and the guys play pickup. Saw him in batting practice one day, bend over to catch a ground ball off the fungo and somebody hit a line drive and he went straight up and he was two and a half feet off the ground and snagged it. That one's hit well out to left field and out of the yard. Zach Morris at the top of the order, his second hit. And it's a round to tripper for the Blue Devils. And they just keep coming at you. You don't expect your leadoff guy. In most cases to be hitting the ball out of the ballpark, but that's number seven for Morris and that ties him for the league for the team lead. It ties him with Ben Miller here who digs into the right handed box. Now a two run lead for Duke. Yeah, there's no let up. No. Miller's three for three. Opposite field, down the line, a lot of space for it to fall. Miller slides in with another double. Big night for Miller. Fourth hit of the evening, two doubles, two singles. That one wasn't exactly crushed, but uh, nevertheless, he's on second base. I wrote it down the same way on my <laughs> scorecard, right? That's and tomorrow it's going to look like a bullet. Man, what a season that guy's had. Ooh. Now a man in scoring position with two away for Alex Stone. In search of his first hit tonight. Swings through it, one and one. Wow. 
seriously, you're 500 coming into the game and your batting average goes up 38 points? Yeah. After four <laughs> at-bats? Come on. And you got as many at-bats as he's got? <laughs> wow. The one and two. Stone pokes it foul. Kind of got cut off that Kurt story by the home run, but he bent over to pick up a ball that was hit on the by a fungo to him, and somebody at the bat hit a line drive, and he went up about two and a half feet and snagged it. Really athletic play. Another foul ball. Stone keeps his one and two. You were never a pitcher, were you? No. The way you said, I wrote it down just like a dub. <laughs> Stone sends it way up into the Winston-Salem night sky. Kurtz in to make the grab, and it retires the side. Solo home run player of the summer in a lot yep. of ways. Starring for Team USA is the not oft called upon Division II standout for the collegiate national team. It's a high chop on the first swing, chance to run it out and is unable to do so. A nice play from second baseman Zach Morris. All right, now we've seen good plays at third, first and second base. And a good play in the hole at short. Good defense by Duke so far this evening. And King, as you were saying, really good speed too down the first baseline. Terrific summer. Played very well in the Cape. He and Burns gave Wake Forest the number one transfer class, according to most publications. Called strike on the first pitch to Jake Reinish. A couple of hits and as many times up for him. Good to see Jake Reinish. 100% producing the way that he can. We talked to Tom Walter earlier in the week, and it struck me the way Tom spoke about Jake Reinish when I asked about him. He said, nothing makes me happier than seeing Jake Reinish happy, and that's the kind of season it's been. It was a struggle for him being injured. Dinged up his knee pretty severely. Come back to play the outfield. I asked him how he enjoyed playing the outfield. He said, it's really a long way to run out there. <laughs> it was his first reaction. Was, it's really a long way to run out there every inning. Never mind what you got to do once you're, once you're in position. Called strike three. Nice pitch by Gabriel Nard for out number two. Reinish thought it may have been a bit inside, but it had some tail to it. Eighth strikeout of the season for Nard. Just about the same pitch, but to a hitter on the other side of the plate. One and one to Jack Wynne. Again, leaves it where it is, two and one. Two out walk for Jack Wynne, and there's a man aboard for Austin Hawk, who's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. It's the fourth walk drawn by 
Wake Forest batters tonight. Combine that with the six base hits. Hawk, a lot of top spin on that one up the middle. Morris makes the play. It retires the side of four face to Gabe Nard, gets three of them and gets out unscathed. He's faced seven of the nine Duke batters. The only two he has not faced so far, Logan Bravo at the plate and A.J. Gracia, the two guys who have been forces tonight. Neither has been retired successfully. Got a buck that says 7-5 is not the final. Now a one and one to Bravo, who's two for two. Double, a triple, and a walk. He's come around to score all three times. Out in front. Good changeup. Got him again. It will require a throw. But Logan Bravo heads back to the dugout for the first time tonight. And I don't care how long the career goes, I'll never get used to saying, looks to his wrist for the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Look to the catcher for a sign. Nope, not anymore. Looks to his wrist for the sign. A.J. Gracia is a triple from the cycle. Is another that time it's in the zone two and one. He came around even count two two. Triples the hard one though, right? Yeah, you know some people don't even like to to say triple from the cycle because it's more common. That's blasted high up into the air, long gone. Home run number two for Gracia. Forget three bags, he wanted the round tripper. Wasnowski had been having success with the changeup, and they decided to try to go by him with the heater. And the ball got out faster. That was well hit. So that's home run number five on the season for Gracia. His first three came in a three home run single game performance on opening weekend in Conway. He's got two here tonight and Duke now leads by three. That one had some significant decibels to it. Couple swings and misses for Devin Obi. He's now got a one and two. Nicks it foul, keeps his count. Shinoski thought he had it. He started a little walk off the mound. Two two Obi way behind hacks and misses for strike three. So this time they do sneak the fastball by him, but a little bit better location with it.
Well, a lot better location with it. <laughs> Shinaski drops it into the strike zone against Macon Winslow. Pretty good bounce back after giving up the home run. Well, that nicked Winslow maybe on the wrist. Important to the forearm. Didn't look like it crushed it. Just nicked it. So a runner on first with two away. Andrew Yu, the batter, 0 for 3, has struck out twice. Gill has to chase it down. No chance at a throw, and Winslow is at second base. Aggressive running. Yeah, he took off. That was a really good read. As soon as he saw that that was going to be short for Gill. Two outs. You're willing to take a chance. You're out on your front foot. You holds back. Pretty confident on that call. Have you got some umpiring in your background? A little. <laughs> you know, they were a lot younger than these guys, though. <laughs> Swing and a miss, you with a two and one count. Once an umpire, always an umpire. We got some umpires in the stands tonight. Oh, I've heard them. Every game, <laughs> every ballpark. <laughs> Find a lot of them in the broadcast booths, too. On occasion. You just got a piece of it. That was not fun for Cam Gill. Second time tonight, and the ball just popped out right at the end. Second time tonight, he's been dinged up in the legs. Another two and two. You punches it over to the right side, snagged by Kurtz. It's a long run, a long toss for Shinoski, who gets to the bag in time. It retires the Tate Ballestero leading off for Wake Forest here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Demon Deacons trail by three. Game one of the weekend set. Eight, nine, one in the order. Alistero takes, and that's strike two. Good pitch. There goes Miller over to second base. Pull side shift now. Nard, the one and two, swung on and missed. That's out number one. Cam Gill comes up next for Wake Forest. Changed the plane on him, went upstairs at 93, a little bit more than he'd shown earlier. He blew it right by him, and you can see Nard getting some confidence here. Through five batters, he's retired four of them, struck out two. How about that? That was a hungry swing from Gill. Good breaking ball. 0-2 hole for Cameron Gill, who's 0-2 with a couple of strikeouts. Bill Salento is going to call Gill down to have a quick conversation. Just relaxing a little bit, maybe not being too over aggressive. Meanwhile, Nard is very aggressive. He's feeling good. Hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but the radar is not looking that great off in the distance. Oh, and two from Nard, and Gill pokes it through the left side of the infield. It's a quality hitting coach right there. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'd say. Cameron Gill gets his first knock of the night. <laughs> I'd say Bill Salento does too, but you know his musings have contributed to yeah. more of the hits than just that one. One of the best around, coach of the year a couple years ago. National coach of the year, assistant coach of the year. Mike Forrest gets back to the top of the order. First pitch swing for Merrick Houston. Who has seen a full count all three times he's been up tonight. Duke bunching him to the middle just a little bit in the outfield. A lot of room down the lines. Lined a diving snag by Morris at second. Unable to double up Gill at first, but that's two down. And once again, the Duke defense comes up with a big play. Yeah, it's been solid. Yeah. This ball is a little bit inside out, so it's got some spin to it. Nice dive and quick throw, but. Good anticipation at first by Gill and Wessinger, first base coach. Adam Tellier contacts on the first pitch. High bounce, double pump from Morris, and the snag by Bravo at first. Another remarkable defensive play. And the Blue Devils. Lefty. Only four appearances a season ago out of the bullpen. More oft used this year. Had some control that could come and go a little bit last year, but it's been around the plate more. Effective his last time out. Wake Forest is a little bit dinged up in their bullpen. Cole Rowland, who's expected to be their closer, has been out all year to this point, Start just starting to throw again. Left-handers have been a little bit dinged up as well. So Tom Walter and Corey Muscara looking for somebody to grab it and run with it. Three pitches, three balls to Wallace Clark. All four. Leadoff man walks for the Blue Devils. And not what you're looking for to the leadoff man late when you're down by three. It's just a third walk issued by a Wake Forest pitcher tonight. And it turns the order over. Zach Morris now. Yeah, that hurts even a little bit more, doesn't it, when it's the number nine guy. Solo shot his last time up for Morris. Two for four. Located, makes it one and two. That's that one slot, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, he's called it that way all night, though, so evidently it's a strike. Runner goes. Throw by Gill on a short hop, and they got the tag. Clark overslid the bag, and he thought, well, I. I've got no shot of getting back to second. Might as well try and extend it to third. Yeah, that didn't go very far either. You know, I, you can't really tell if the field is still wet, but he slides past it a long way. And a good job by Hawk to stay with it. Olive pits out there in the infield on the dirt area. Morris sends it skyward into center field. King is there, and that's out number two. Now, let me ask you this before they update the official stats. Do you give Clark the stolen bag at second? 
I guess you have to because he had it. He was safe. <laughs> he was on his way to third. And then he was on his way to third. Sure. <laughs> there you go. But you talk about these fields when they get wet. A couple years ago, 11 came in here with Florida State, Mike Martin, and he had his guys practicing that on a wet field, practicing their slides. Especially when you consider the artificial surface. I mean, it's a totally different slide. Well, yeah, and I've kind of talked this story to death, but there are olive pits are the components of the brown part of the field in the infield as opposed to rubber pellets on the green part. Now, whether or not they slide differently, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, That's I, a true story. I wouldn't know. And when you look at them, you can see the difference. Two and one to Ben Miller slapped onto the ground over to short Houston plenty of time to make a strong throw and Ben Miller retired for the first time tonight a scoreless frame for the Blue Devils haven't seen that much let's stretch it Nick Kurtz to lead it off for Wake Forest here in the bottom of the seventh inning looks at a first pitch strike from Gabe Nard and now they're going to move the early. yeah move the third baseman. Ben Miller to the pull side of Kurtz. No chance of pulling that one. It's outside one and one. By the way, the ruling was caught stealing. You know how I score it as a pitcher? Found money. Yeah. You get an out on a steal. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Big cut. No connection for Kurtz, and it's one and two as the rain has restarted here in Winston-Salem. Out back. This one start time was delayed by an hour when we began. Rain in the forecast pretty heavily, it seems, for tomorrow. A little iffier tonight. Abe Nard's two and two fought off. Nick Kurtz retains the count. Now a full count. This is a tough assignment. As the leadoff batter for the third inning of action for Gabe Nard. Yanked, but foul. Rain hasn't made many of the spectators move. They just put some gear on. Close take. Nick Kurtz with a leadoff walk. His second walk of the night. That one took nine pitches. Well, runners are what Wake Forest needs, and Nick Kurtz exhorting his teammates on after that walk. Gabe Nard's going to get a visit to the mound season. Well, that is a great time to bring him in for Chris Pollard early, though. A little very surprising that he's in this early. I'm figuring maybe you can get multiple innings out of him. Everybody in the ballpark believing that tomorrow is going to be canceled to move back to a doubleheader, although they won't make that determination till tomorrow. King. Comes all the way through. Now it's a one and one. RBI double in the first, three run homer in the third. Two for three nights so far for Seaver King. And he punches it up the middle. They're at first and second after the single for King. Nice broadcaster jinx there, Darren. Oh, come on. Does that count? Does that, is, is that what that is? Just saying. You said it. 
Yeah, they're the ones doing it. That's my thing about broadcaster jinx. And no hitters. Well, we didn't have to worry about that. No, no. <laughs> for sure. But in the meantime, the tying run comes to the plate. Jake Ryan issues two for three. But he did strike out looking his last time up. It's three and oh. No green light for Rhinish. Need runners for Wake Forest. Jack Winnay in the on deck circle. That's ball four. Base is loaded for the Demon Deacons. Bielenson working very quickly, but not very accurately. One of those we've come to expect, and it is definitely the former. Stone digs it out of the turf. Nicely. Yeah, that was, that seems big. And once again, Duke's defense. Contributing mightily. A called strike to an A, it's one and one. Some funny action on that ball right at the end. And Bielenson wants another one. Nub shot back to Bielenson. The toss is there at home plate to get out number one. Took a little bit off and got Wene out in front. Here, right off the end of the bat. Perfect play for Duke. Bases remain loaded. Austin Hawk, the batter. A team high 17 RBIs entering tonight's contest. Has one grand slam to his credit this year. Out of play, one ball, one strike. Went the opposite way with the ball. Cut and missed. Good fastball. I'm thinking that he's thinking that I'm thinking that he's thinking that I'm having trouble with my off speed stuff. So you would think that he'd throw a fastball. We'll see the 2 2. Put it top shelf, but Hawk leaves it there a full count. What's he thinking that you're thinking that he's thinking <laughs> that you're thinking I now? Think fastball's his best pitch, and I think he throws another fastball. If he could throw a change up for a strike, something off speed for a strike, he'd lock him up. But I, he seems to have more confidence in his fastball. Caught and a miss. Bielenson gets Hawk, and that's two away. 93. 
top part of the strike zone and Tom Walter out to announce a pinch hitter. It's Antonio Morales. In place of Tate Ballestero in the DH slot, Ballestero was hitless. Two and nothing to Morales. He's drawn a couple of walks, 0 for 4 so far this season, though. Big spot for the freshman. Ewanson wants a, a new pearl, and the fans letting him hear about it. <laughs> it's a called strike. Nice little rivalry between these two schools. I think that's fair to say. This has been. <laughs> sky high for Morales. Clark makes the catch. It's short and it strands. The base is loaded. Chuck Bielinson gets out of the jam in the bottom of the seventh. Duke remains up by three. Wasn't the pitcher's duel that we thought it would be, but it's been a terrific baseball game. Four of their eight runs have been driven in on long balls. Three, four, five in the order. Alex Stone watches and it spins into the strike zone 0 and 1. Chases and Zach Johnston has a couple of strikes on the Duke catcher. Went off speed and had great movement away. Stone strikes out. That's one away in the eighth. Really nice sequence by Johnston. Not Nicknames, bad. Nickname Slim. Can you believe that? <laughs> Fifth batter faced for Johnston. It's a call. First pitch strike against Logan Bravo. Well, at the risk of another jinx or what is going to be perceived <laughs> as a jinx it seems to me that we are clear of any weather bravo skies it out to right ryan issues there and secures it for the second out just happened to look up in the wake outfield receiver king in center field was very deep in left center and when A and left was almost in the warning track, so he pops it to right. And the way your prognostications have gone so far this evening, I'm expecting downpour <laughs> any second. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> John stood with a strike to A.J. Gracia, who's homered each of his last two times up. He's four for four. And around, quick two strikes. Okay. 
Johnston the one and two. Breaking ball. Not enough snap. And a close take by Gracia. Again with two strikes. Got Gracia swinging. A three up, three down side for the. North Carolina over Pitt. Miami, Virginia in a tight one. That expects to be a good series. One run games mixed in there. It's going to be a good year in the conference. Charlie Bielinson with a one and one count here to Cameron Gill. Bielinson, after a leadoff walk was issued, entered in the bottom of the seventh inning. So if he is in fact going to be the guy to get the save and finish this one out for the Blue Devils, that would mean a three inning performance from him. One down, two to go, but a three and one count to the leadoff batter. And similarly to Wallace Clark's walk his last time up for Duke, Cameron Gill in the nine hole with Merrick Houston and the top of the order waiting. That one's shot out to the opposite field and a great job by Gracia to catch up with it shy of the warning track. Hit well, but right at him. Yeah, Bruce Souter said to me one time, you know, I got a chance to throw the last pitch of the World Series this year. And he did. And you get the <laughs> feeling that tonight Bielinson's got a chance to throw the last pitch of this ball game. Not saying it's a not quite, situation. Not but. quite the World Series, but I was going to say this has got this has got postseason feel to it all night. Good interactive crowd here at the couch. Obviously, some some pretty big stakes with both teams being ranked very high. Crowd was really pumped up at six o'clock. Had to put it on hold for an hour. But the concourse was lit up. People were having fun out in the concourse. One and one. Slips into the zone. One ball, two strikes now to Merrick Houston. Line drive. And it dies in left, the base knock for Merrick Houston. That's his second hit of the night, but his first since he led things off with a double in the first inning. Well, this is the part of the order that Wake Forest needs to have up to have a big inning. Multiple run inning. Adam Tellier, the batter, he's hitless tonight, but has a walk and a run scored. Nick Kurtz in the on deck circle without a hit tonight, but a couple of walks and a run scored. Shows Bunt quickly pulls away. That might have been just a cause a little ruckus in the batter's box, more so than he really intended to bunt. That's always one of my favorite chants. You're due. He's hitting 413. Coming in. Sprays it up into the air. Shallow right field. Morris out from second. Gracia calls him off. So now two away. The runner stays put at first. And here comes Nick Kurtz. and wants another new base. I was going to say, no booze this time. <laughs> Guess it got up there in the rain clouds. Kurtz misses on a big swing on the first pitch. Now they put the shift on again. Yeah, you don't typically see that happen with one strike. Yeah. Normally it's at the two strike point in the plate appearance. Well, they've got a statistic somewhere that 
analyzes to let's shift him with one strike. Hertz left it there. The pitch by Bielinson. Now he's got two strikes. That one bounces into Stone's chest. Textbook block. You keep you keep pointing it out. Duke's defense yeah. has been really solid in this one. In a game where you're presumably going to win within the margins. I think Stone took one off the communication device. Okay, yeah, I was going to say some sort of equipment swap out. Yeah, he's going to get a new wristband. Another phrase you think you're never going to utter in your life. <laughs> Block the pitch with his communication device. <laughs> Kurtz reaches, can't connect, and strikes out to retire the side. Bielinson, Larry Sorensen, Darren Vaught, here at the couch in Winston-Salem. We're glad you're with us. Evan Obi looks at one and has a 1-0 count to lead things off for the Blue Devils. Trying to add some insurance runs before Wake Forest's final opportunity in the bottom of the ninth. Obi a swing and a miss, one and one. Zach Johnston the pitch. A called strike. Breaking ball, grounded over to third, dug up by Tellier. The throw on a hop, Kurtz falling backward just as he did earlier in the night, but squeezes it and gets the out. A little bit interesting because Tellier had plenty of time and the throw just came up short. It looked like he threw a sinker into the ground. And as you said, Kurtz again with the, gets in good position, throws pretty far out and he picks it. Somewhat inelegantly. Now to be the first plate appearance of the night for Tyler Albright, who replaced Macon Winslow and left a bit earlier in the game. Right out of Greensboro, man. They play some good baseball in the state of North Carolina. No doubt. He was a semi regular in the lineup and in that left field slot a season ago. That got him before he got out of the batter's box, so a foul ball. Evens it up two and two. Breaking ball pulled foul. Got a little bit further out onto the field, and it took a white player slightly longer to get out there to it. Now the 2 2. Two balls, two strikes, take three to Tyler Albright here. 
Lowe's take. Johnston thought he had the punch out. Instead, it's a full count. Missed that slot that time, evidently. Three, two. Taken, and that is strike three to Albright. They'd thrown him a good changeup two pitches before, and that time just threw the fastball by him, knee high, good pitch. And if you're looking for bright spots for Wake Forest, Johnston pitching out of the bullpen, saving the bullpen for the next two days has looked like a left-hander that they can count on out of the bullpen. He's through two and two-thirds, and this is the ninth batter he's faced. And Andrew Yu. Only had one base runner. That was the walk that he threw to Wallace Clark to lead off his first inning. Clark got thrown out. Caught stealing. Was, was not <laughs> credited with the stolen base at second. And I understand why. Technically speaking, that is the rule. Man, I had... One official score went to the rule book on me to send me the info. I saw you had a screenshot in every roster as a two-way guy, outfielder, and a pitcher. They got several of those guys on the Duke roster. It all sorts itself out. <laughs> Cruson two for four, five driven in on the year. Both of his hits home runs. I personally became a pitcher only pretty early in my career. Sounds like Cruson's trying to fight that off. <laughs> Curveballs and sliders will do that to you. Two and one. Yeah, I guess where you were a reliever, you didn't too often get played appearances, did you? Well, I was a starter for about the first five or six years. Well, how'd yeah. that go? I didn't hit. I was in the American League. So I went eight yeah. years without swinging a bat. <laughs> then got traded to the Cardinals. And Whitey Herzog. And it was and it was so bad they put you in the bullpen. <laughs> no, I still started for them. But Whitey Herzog said, the only way you're going to make money eating innings up, which is what you do, is to learn how to bunt. So go learn how to bunt. And I did. Couldn't hit. Gone off by Cruson. So still a two and two. There's a lesson in there. Something about. Adapting, overcoming, keeping well, a job. Something about <laughs> bunting can be a learned skill, too. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. okay. That's why it irritates me when guys can't get bunts down. <laughs> <laughs> Morningstar, another 2-2. Two, two. Now a full count with two away. Went to center field in St. Petersburg two days a week with Al Lanier to learn how to bunt. That's ball four. Crewson walks. And Duke's got a man on with two down. Got the elbow down a little bit, left the slider up, breaking ball up. Yeah, it also helped when he said, if you want to stay in the game and make money, <laughs> learn how to bunt. That's incentive. More gear retrieval. Swing and a miss by Clark, 0-1. Another phrase you probably grew up thinking, I can't wait till the day I can say more <laughs> gear retrieval. <laughs> At That's first it. base. Cruson's a few pounds lighter. I love it. You're not you're not a, a yell at the clouds guy though. You just you roll with it, right? Well, you know, whatever. <laughs> Game changes. <laughs> Right? Everything changes. Blake. 
Move over to Cruz, and he dives back safely again. Although why we change the speed of the game for the people that like at least so that they'll stay five more minutes is a little bit beyond. There it but, is. You know. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Action clock down to four seconds for Morningstar. There goes the runner. The throw to second. Skips into center field. Christian's going to hang on at second. And the timing of it looked like they had a shot at him at second base, too, but the throw bounced in. And Houston unable to pick it on the backhand side. Now, I don't mind the pitch clock because I always work fast anyway. I mean, the pitch clock would have had zero relevance to the way that I played, so I don't mind it. Go, Blake. Bob Euchre was the announcer in Milwaukee, and he used to kid with me about the fact that when they came back, the count was always one and one when they came back from a commercial because I was out ready to go, let's play. <laughs> Clark hangs in there. He'll get another two and two. Come back with Bob Euchre still the announcer. I was about to. I was about to say that and clarify. Funny man. Another two and two. Ooh, full count. There's some umpiring. What were we told about 3,000 tickets distributed yep. for this game? So, by my guess, like 2,700 or so <laughs> umpires just then. <laughs> Full count, two away. Clark cuts and misses. Wake Forest trailing by three. Run. Third inning of work for Charlie Bielinson as he tries to close it out and record the save. First pitch to Seaver King makes it 1-0. Yeah, it's kind of funny because as much offense as Duke has shown, really it's the relief pitching in the defense that's been the story of the game for him. Big swing by Seaver King, 1-1 one one now the count. King three hits and four times to the plate. He actually was responsible for the most recent runs, a three-run homer in the third. Out of play, now one and two after the foul ball. Both teams have left ten runners on base. King lofts it up into the gap in left center field. Albright there, shy of the warning track, and that's the first away. Didn't quite click it. Jake Reinish will now be the batter. The interesting story to follow, too, if Bielinson finishes this out, is how much will he be available on Sunday? Yeah, time or two last season, he would throw in all three games of a weekend series. Categorically, I think that makes him a, a quote, rubber arm, using my air quotes. Let me tell you what his shoulder's going to feel like in about 50 years or so, 48 <laughs> years. <laughs> he goes Miller sprinting over to the shift position. That's ball four. Jake Reinish walks with one away. And he reaches for the fourth time in five plate appearances. 
You know, something you don't think about with the infielder racing from one side to the other, the action clock, something to consider there. Well, there you go. Now, Bielinson works very quickly, so I don't, yeah. I don't think you have to no. really worry about that. You just have to remind him, hey, let me get over here first. First pitch swing by Jacqueline A. Trying to get a quick two on the board for Wake Forest. Pole side shift against the right-handed hitting Wene here, and it's one and one. You see Zach Morris bond by your screen. That's obviously closer to where the shortstop <laughs> plays. He's the second baseman. Breaking ball slides in, one and two. Thus leaving a ginormous hole on the right side. Yeah, especially with Bravo holding the runner at first. Full side of the infield. Ewanson off the mark with the fastball, 2-2. Stone tried to steal it. Into the air, center field. Two away. Wake Forest is now 5 of 20 with runners on base. That's not going to do you much good in the long run. Charlie Bielinson, an out away from recording what would be his sixth save of the season. And this time with three innings of work. A little bit surprised to see the same shift on for Austin Hawk in the infield. Hawk lifts it the other way into the gap right center. Obi is there, makes the catch. And the Duke Blue Devils defeat the number one ranked Wake Forest Demon Deacons. It is the first win over a number one team for Duke since they got one on Miami in 2016.